we are very happy to have you on this show uh, on this uh, little panel Thank discussion you. on uh, death penalty uh, would you please tell you about yourself to us a little bit? Yeah, thank you for having me here today. Um, my name is Chiara San Giorgio and I come from Amnesty International, which is uh, a global human rights organization based in uh, London. Uh, Amnesty International uh, is an abolitionist organization. Uh, we oppose the death penalty um, because of um, the protection uh, of the right to life as enshrined in the Universal Declaration on Human Rights. So that's kind of our um, framework. Um, but through our work, we've also been highlighting different reasons why uh, the death penalty should be abolished. Uh, what we see in different countries around the world is that the death penalty is often imposed after unfair trials. Uh, it is often imposed on people um, that were innocent and um, were not part of a crime. I'm here from the Justice Institute Guyana, which is a legal organization, we're a legal institute, and we concentrate on promoting respect for the rule of law respect for human rights, and we also promote respect for environmental and social justice. And the death penalty conflicts with all of those things. We don't agree with the death penalty, so the Justice Institute, the question we ask is not should we abolish it, but why do we have it in the first place? What is the problem that we're trying to solve by having the death penalty? Does it stop crime? And the answer is no. You only have to look at the crime statistics to see that we have really serious problems with crime, so the death penalty hasn't been helping us there at all. So the question for us is, how do we as a people in Guyana live in harmony with one another? And to my mind, we have to look at the death penalty in that context. Does that help us to live in harmony with one another? No. What is the message that the death penalty sends? It's saying violence is still okay. And we believe if it's wrong to take human life, it's wrong to take human life, whether it's an individual that's doing it or whether it's a state that's doing it. Our position is it's wrong to take human life. Uh, and uh, as you all know, I am Father Jerry Dias, currently um, catering and administering the sacraments here in Georgetown. And I'm very happy to be here on this panel discussion and probably bring in a, a few church views along with yours. Uh, and uh, for me, particularly, the fifth commandment, thou shall not kill, which is uh, quite key for a panel discussion for me, according to me, and uh, the sanctity of life. And we have to uphold it because we are all uh, children of God and we don't have right to take another one's life. As I, as I just mentioned, uh, thou shall not kill. Uh, but the, the culture of death is so much uh, in our society today, uh, all over the world. We don't have to name any country for that matter, everywhere. It seems to me that when you look at this culture of death, and, and I agree that it exists, underlying that is a culture of violence. And the message that is often promoted is that violence is okay. I think in Guyana that's a message that we have to counter very strongly. If we look at what happens in many homes, you know, children are beaten, there's a quite a high incidence of domestic violence. Now violence is going to lead at some stage or another to this culture of death because it's based on lack of respect for one another as human beings and lack of caring for one another as human beings. Very often, opposing the death penalty is uh, confused with uh, uh, calling for impunity for crime. Uh, that's not the case. Uh, we advocate for uh, uh, whoever is responsible for uh, murders, rape, for any crime um, to be brought to justice, to be tried uh, according to fair trial standards, uh, and not to be punished according to the punished, uh, punishment um, sanctioned by the law. However, we don't think that the death penalty is the solution. And what we are calling for is uh, to punish crime, but not with the death penalty. The state uh, says something, and uh, you know, some of us try uh, uh, to, uh, to oppose that. But then uh, there is a conflict of ideas between the state and maybe the church, because we don't promote it. It's, it's not right, because uh, uh, in that sense, it is against the law. Uh, Ten Commandments, isn't it? Uh, see, how do we marry these two? Uh, sometimes it's a challenge for us, but some way we have to try to 
try to bring them together and tell the state or, or the law that uh, they also have the right to, to protect each other, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah, I think the, the basis for the state is actually to protect its citizens. So the state must justify its existence by protecting its citizens, by making people's lives better by having a state, not worse. The idea of the state also, I think, is a very complex one, because who is the state? The state is made up of every citizen in Guyana, so we are the state. I think it's sometimes difficult to draw a distinction between us and the state. And when the death penalty is carried out by the state, each one of us has to say, well, hold on a moment, is that right? Is it right that the state of which I am a part should be doing this? Do I actually want to have responsibility for the death of another human being? And I think if, if you're a Catholic, the answer to that question has to be no. You can't believe on the one hand in the sanctity of life and on the other hand say, but it's okay to allow someone to take someone else's life. So I think the question of the state is one that we have to look at very carefully. The state should be doing the right thing, and it's for us as citizens to say, this is what we think our state should be doing. Uh, it is possible, and uh, we hold that um, governments and societies should be guided uh, by the principles of uh, human rights and um, kind of uh, protection and promotion of human rights. The death penalty is the multi ultimate denial of human rights. Uh, and um, the goal of uh, incarceration has been um, clearly recognized as uh, being a goal of uh, uh, restoration and uh, uh, having as the main objective uh, trying to transform an offender and uh, try to make it uh, fit to go back into society uh, and um, kind of get on with uh, their life without posing any threat to society. Uh, so the, this principle has already been recognized, it is there. The question is uh, how can we uh, ensure that altogether we call on the authorities and those who have the power to make that social transformation, uh, to, for that transform social transformation to become a reality. Um, very often we hear about the death penalty during highly emotional moments. Um, we, we see in the papers very often um, terrible murders, uh, c crime against women, uh, and um, it is normal in the circumstances to, to hear uh, very emotional reactions, to hear call for a vindicative cause and calls for um, justice to, to be made. Um, however, uh, we don't think that the justice system policies should be uh, defined on the basis of these emotions. Uh, we should try to find ways for a uh, crime to be punished and uh, to find a way for, uh, as you mentioned, restoration. Uh, to find a way for uh, the victims of crime uh, to have a possibility of um, kind of encountering and feeling that justice has been served. But we don't think that that penalty is helping in that direction. You, you, as you said, it's, uh, sometimes the death penalties can be very emotional. Uh, let me tell you why. Uh, when I was in London visiting prison in Wandsworth, Wandsworth was the place, uh, those days they used to execute people, but now it's abolished in, in Britain, isn't it? Uh, I, uh, they had displayed in one of the exhibitions that all the, the, the instruments they use, use for execution and particularly the little note uh, signed by whoever the governor or whoever it is saying that uh, so and so will be executed at 10 o'clock uh, at this place and the, the person has to read that who is going to be executed and it would have been terrible experience isn't it for that person to read his own death. You know, mm -hmm. it's kind of premonition, isn't it, in that sense? And and it really, it's 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 it's. it's. And what about Guyana? Is, is uh, death penalty in Guyana? Well, we have the death penalty in Guyana for murder, but it's no longer mandatory. That was changed, and so the court now has the option of sentencing someone to death, or sentencing someone to imprisonment, uh, usually meaning imprisonment for life. So I think there there has been a change in that sense. More importantly, I think, is the fact that Guyana has not executed anyone since 1997. And I think as Guyanese, we should be very proud of that. We should be proud of the fact that we haven't had a judicial execution for 17 years. The key is to make sure that we keep moving in that direction. Because once you have state-sanctioned violence, it's going to be very hard to have a peaceful society. 
And as I was saying, the question for me is, well, why do we have this death penalty? And it's rather embarrassing, actually. The reason we have the death penalty is because the British had the death penalty. So we got it when we were a British colony. Britain abolished it a very long time ago. And we're still limping along with the death penalty on our statute books. So we have this horrible sort of colonial inheritance. And I think it's long overdue that we throw it off and we show actually, no, we are a free people. We don't have to be chained to the past. We don't have to live with this uh, dreadful colonial piece of legislation. We can get rid of it. We know that there are better ways to do things than to execute people. We can join the rest of the world, including Britain, um, that don't execute. And I think that at the moment, there are 140 countries in the world that don't have the death penalty. We need to make it 141. The Catechism of the Catholic Church. I would like to just uh, uh, point out a couple of things on death penalty. It's mentioned in the, in the, in the book, in, uh, in paragraph 2266. Uh, it says, for this reason, the traditional teaching, uh, I'm not reading everything, just, just the key points, the church has acknowledged and well-founded right and duty of legitimate public authority to punish m male factors by means of penalties commensurate with the gravity of the crime, not excluding in cases of extreme gravity the death penalty. And a total of 140 countries that um, do not use the death penalty and are considered abolitionists or abolitionists in practice. Um, what we, we also see that the Church has been uh, uh, progressively more proactive in uh, advocating for um, protection of the right to life, including through the abolition of the death penalty. I personally work very closely with uh, several Catholic organizations, uh, for instance, Community of Sant'Egidio, which is uh, a Rome-based organization, and uh, they've been uh, instrumental um, to help, the, for instance, the government of Mongolia to declare a moratorium on all executions and move to um, enshrine the, the penalty abolition in legislation. Uh, but also we often see that in countries like uh, uh, Papua New Guinea or other Asian countries or African countries as well, whenever there is uh, an outcry following um, heinous murders or crime, uh, we see that uh, very often it is uh, uh, the church who is actually coming out and uh, saying, hold on, what are we doing? Are we calling for another murder? Are we uh, advocating for uh, another life to be taken kind of in rep um, reparation for uh, the, done, the evil that has been done? So we see that um, there has been uh, a growing kind of uh, awareness uh, also mm. from our partners in the Catholic Church. Just, just, to, just to intervene a little bit there, uh, to t concretely, let's. Uh, for me, sometimes it's a big challenge when I meet the victims. For example, uh, <clears throat> I still remember uh, people saying, you know, victims saying, uh, this person, uh, you know, dashed. He was going in the vehicle and and hit me, and the person is paralyzed for life. Uh, but he's free. He's, he's out there and he's enjoying his life. So we have to ask ourselves, why do we have so much crime in this country and how are we going to stop it? We have to reach to a situation where women can walk down the streets and be safe, where children don't grow up with fear of violence, where our husbands, our fathers, our brothers, our sons are safe, our mothers, wives, sisters, daughters are safe. And somehow I think we, we have to find ways to live together and create a violent free society. And you know, it's possible. If you look at um, some countries, within the last 10 years, nine or 10 countries have declared at least one year where they didn't have any murders. I can give uh, Montserrat, Palau, um, Turks and Caicos. But if you look at the countries that actually declared a year that was free of murder, they don't have the death penalty. And I think that sends a very clear message that if you want a violent, free society, it's got to start with the state. The state has to stop being violent and then has to be in a position of saying to everyone else, stop the violence. I completely agree, Chiara, with your point about the guns. And in Guyana, we are seeing an increase in the amount of guns circulating. Um, and that, I think, has been heavily influenced, perhaps, by you know, a more American approach where guns are far more common 
and the right to bear arms. I think it's totally inappropriate from Guyana. Our history is very different. Our social makeup is very different. And we should be looking at countries that, that don't have guns, say, well, how do they cope with crime, rather than looking at a country that is very fixated on guns. She already mentioned a lovely, lovely point. We have to look, <laughs> not, not the punishment before that, why somebody has gone to that extreme to, to do violence or murder or whatever it is, why he has, he has put in that position. Oh, I agree we have to start at the beginning. What is, what is causing this? Why are young children fighting in the playground? What are we teaching our young people? Are we teaching them about love? Are we teaching them to care for one another? Or are we teaching them that, you know, when you do something wrong, you're going to get beaten. And if your mother and your father are beating you, they represent authority. So therefore, it's OK. Violence is OK. Um, I don't think we can afford to keep on beating our children and teaching them that violence is all right. When I look at teenagers now and you say, well, what, what music do young people listen to? Quite often, a lot of it is very violent, very nasty, very aggressive. If you listen to some of the things that some disc jockeys say, some people on the radio, it's pretty awful. And that's what we're putting into our children's minds. So there's a, I think there's a lot that we have to do to rescue our young people. If one could make sufficient arguments for the death penalty, and I don't think you can, but even if one could make an argument that it works in some, in some way, how do you then do it without violating another very fundamental principle, which is that we must not be torturing one another? So I think there's layer upon layer of problems with the death penalty. And if you look at the societies that carry it out, Chiara mentioned that there are a few that are the most active, China. We don't even know how many people China executes because that's a state secret. The United States of America, that's one of the big executors on the planet. Um, these are not societies that we should be looking to as models. These are societies that we should be looking at and saying, hold on, we don't want that influence here in our society. We want to do something better. And if you look again at the United States, the states that have the death penalty have higher rates of murder than the states that don't. So it clearly doesn't work. It certainly doesn't work to stop people from killing one another. Uh, just to inform, so for instance, we have uh, here a, a map that shows which are the countries that have been actively executing. Um, these are the top eight countries. Uh, and here we can see kind of the disproportionate amount of people that are executed in countries like China, Iran, and Saudi Arabia here at the top. Um, we find it's, uh, it's very important for people to understand and uh, to hear more about actually the reality of the death penalty. Those who are in favor, those who are opposed, because it's only by talking to one another that we can actually learn, exchange views and so on. Otherwise, if you don't talk to one another, you end up with violence. So the idea is to, um, well, obviously have a report on this visit and then to look at following up maybe with some groups who will then take up the issue with the Special Select Committee. Maybe we'll, ha we'll be able to have more shows of the different films that we have on the death penalty and just get the momentum going. I think at the moment it's not something that engages people's attention very much, but Friday was the um, World Day Against the Death Penalty, and I think it's a good chance now for us to look at the next six months to a year with the Special Select Committee and decide what do we really want in this country? Do we want to live with this barbaric hang-up from British colonialism or do we want to join the rest of South America and abolish the death penalty in Guyana and find better ways of dealing with crime, preventing crime, deterring crime, making sure that we have a criminal justice system that functions so the people who commit crimes are actually found, tried, sentenced, and we can have confidence in the criminal justice system. A lot of people don't have confidence in the criminal justice system. So that's something that has to be fixed. And we have to work out this future together. And uh, for the viewers, um, violence is not the answer. We all know that. It will create more violence and more 
and more and we get into the circle of violence and it will be difficult for us to come out. Therefore, if you are against violence and what is happening around you, if you don't support it, I think we have to join the cause and we have to speak against it because we don't like violence. Therefore, come and join these young ladies and me too. Uh, 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 whatever you, your views, as, as Melinda said, sometimes you oppose, sometimes you, you agree. So you let us know. We can take on from there and we have more discussion on that. The death penalty does not lead to justice. Without peace, there is no justice. We want our mothers, sisters, wives and daughters to be safe from violence and fear.